Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Hi everyone! At first, in the beginning of this video, I wanted to talk to you about cars and saving lives. But a certain accident which occurred during the shooting made me change my plan. So what happened? And how did I end up in the hospital with second degree burns because of one chemical? Let's find out! In this video, I'm going to tell you about some dangerous chemicals that many of you didn't know are present in our life and what harm they can cause if mishandled. However, I want to start not with a chemical that made me wear this bandage on my hand, but with a chemical that helps save the lives of submarine sailors and also provides oxygen for breathing to firefighters and the rescuers. These yellow granules, called sodium peroxide, can do all of that. You can obtain this substance if you ignite in the air such an alkali metal as sodium. Because of its extreme chemical activity, when burning, sodium can attach to oxygen atoms, creating not just an oxide, but rather sodium peroxide. Because of the abundance of oxygen, the obtained chemical is highly chemically active and unstable. When added to water, sodium peroxide immediately starts to break down into hydrogen peroxide and an alkali which is sodium hydroxide. You can detect hydrogen peroxide in the water if you add a pinch of potassium permanganate into the solution. After that, hydrogen peroxide in the solution will break down into oxygen and water. That is why even when stored in the air, sodium peroxide can gradually react with moisture from the air and also with carbon dioxide, which people constantly exhale while breathing. This interesting property is still put to use in many submarines and also some gas masks. But because I have neither of them, to demonstrate this effect, I'm going to use a regular aquarium and a carbon dioxide detector, which I use at home every day. I'm using carbonated water from a shop as a source of carbon dioxide, which is a solution of carbonic acid in water. As soon as I open the bottle, the carbonic acid starts breaking down, as the pressure starts dropping, filling the aquarium with heavy carbon dioxide, which my detector immediately detects. In order to get more carbon dioxide, I'm just pouring some sparkling water into a beaker, and the detector starts going off. Because over 2000 CO2 particles in a million is a dangerous level of carbon dioxide for people. Over 10,000 particles in one million or in other words 1% of carbon dioxide in the air can make people faint. I think we can stop at this level. In order to rescue the imaginary crew in my aquarium imitating a submarine and reduce the concentration of carbon dioxide in it, I'm pouring some sodium peroxide on the tray and covering the aquarium. Detectors reading indicates that the level of carbon dioxide in the aquarium is decreasing quite rapidly. Because the sodium peroxide starts to actively react with carbon dioxide, releasing oxygen and sodium carbonate. Thus, if it was a submarine instead of the aquarium, submarine sailors would have been able to hold off for some time under the water using the onboard sodium peroxide oxygen generators. This process is dramatically depicted in the Kursk film, where stuck sailors could breathe using such sodium peroxide capsules. If we add a little water to dry sodium peroxide, it will trigger an active chemical reaction, releasing a lot of heat. And if we mix a little bit of freshly obtained sodium peroxide with something flammable, for instance with chocolate flakes for breakfast, upon adding water, this mix can even self-ignite. In reality true, the flow of this reaction largely depends on the quality of sodium peroxide, because I could not repeat this experiment with old sodium peroxide. Probably, this time, some peroxide turned into carbonate, which hinders this reaction. But without a flammable material, reaction of sodium peroxide with water will only result in heating and the release of heat, because there is nothing that can burn. 
But in the Kursk film, when a sodium peroxide oxygen generator fell into a pool of water, it resulted in a powerful explosion, but most probably this was a cinematic exaggeration. Nevertheless, sodium peroxide needs to be handled carefully, because no one knows what organic material it can get mixed with, and what can happen when it comes into contact with water. Since we are talking about oxygen generators, how could I not mention kilograms of potassium chloride hanging above airline passengers' heads? This chemical is also called Bertolli salt, and it's named after French chemist Claude Bertolli, who synthesized potassium chloride by passing chlorine from a hot potassium hydroxide solution. Nowadays this chemical is synthesized almost the same way, using electricity and the same potassium hydroxide solution. The obtained Bertolli salt is very chemically active and is still used in pyrotechnics and mesh heads, because it makes mesh heads ignite best as a result of the reaction with red phosphorus applied to the matchbox. Even sugar, mixed with potassium chloride, turns into real rocket fuel and can get ignited with just a drop of sulfuric acid. If we melt some Bertolli salt and mix it with regular marmalade sweets, they will burn, glowing brighter than a searchlight in such a strong oxidizing conditions. That's because when potassium chloride is heated up with some flammable chemicals, this material starts breaking down, releasing a lot of oxygen in the form of molecules and even atoms, which is known as atomic oxygen. In such conditions, no flammable materials can withstand. Even a dried burger, when placed into a melted potassium chloride, turns into a first stage modern space rocket. Don't try this at home. But how can this power be used in a peaceful way? After several years of research, it turned out that under certain conditions, potassium chloride can break down releasing a lot of oxygen, which can be used for breathing in extreme conditions. To demonstrate this property, I'll show one experiment. First. I just melted some potassium chloride in the test tube. At high temperatures, this chemical gradually starts breaking down, releasing small oxygen bubbles, but it's not enough for breathing. We need to speed up the reaction. To do that, I'm adding a pitch of manganese dioxide, which is a great catalyst, which means it can speed up some chemical reactions. Again, after adding the catalyst, the molten potassium chloride immediately starts forming because of the releasing oxygen. There is so much of it, that even a smoldering rush light immediately ignited after being lowered into the test tube with the outflowing oxygen. To mass produce oxygen, a prepared mixture consisting of potassium chloride, iron powder and manganese dioxide is used. You can see the ratio of the ingredients on your screen. When heated, such a mixture can start self-sustaining reaction, where potassium chloride breaks down quite quickly releasing a substantial amount of pure oxygen. For instance, 7 grams of the mixture produce over 1 liter of pure oxygen, which when mixed with nitrogen will yield 5 liters of pure air for breathing. Nowadays, this breakdown reactions of potassium chloride is used in many oxygen generators, which are installed practically in all commercial jets, instead of heavy and bulky tanks with oxygen. As soon as there is a loss of pressure in the aircraft's cabin, or some accident happens, oxygen masks with oxygen coming from the breakdown of potassium chloride immediately drop down. Oxygen gets you high. Emergency water landing 600 miles an hour. Blank faces, calm as Hindu cows. Turns out, nowadays a rather dangerous chemical can save your life, unless it's not mishandled, of course. I think, after considering some gas generators in vehicles, it's time for you to learn why I have these cars. Because it has something to do with cars, with airbags to be precise. Nowadays, they are installed practically in all cars, manufactured from 1999 onwards. 
In essence, an airbag is a small pyrotechnic charge which you always carry with you because in the instance of a car accident, it starts producing a lot of gas at the needed moment for inflating the nylon airbag, protecting you from hitting a hard steering wheel or dashboard. The main chemical in the composition of the pyrotechnic charge is a rather toxic and unusual substance called sodium azide. When ignited, it immediately starts breaking down into metallic sodium and pure gaseous nitrogen, which inflates the airbag. Still, as you can see, even if we heat up pure sodium azide in a test tube, the reaction runs not so fast, and besides, it produces very caustic metallic sodium vapor. That is why some other chemicals are added to sodium azide in airbags, for instance, such chemicals as iron oxide and potassium nitrite, which oxidize the released sodium and also speed up burning of sodium azide, which is why an airbag inflates in just 40 milliseconds, which is faster than the blink of an eye. To better demonstrate this effect, I have bought several airbags manufactured in different years, but for some reason they were sold to me without special terminals, and I could not inflate them with do-it-yourself ones. Because, as it turned out, there is a special protective mechanism that can be disabled only when the factory-made terminals for that cars are connected. I was surprised to see that on YouTube everyone's airbags work properly, while my airbags didn't work. That is why, in order to diversify the video, somehow I decided to try to put apart one of such airbags and to show you the speedy burning of that very sodium azide based fuel. At first, everything was going well. I made several grooves with the help of a dreamer with a diamond disc, but the process came to a halt at this stage. I tried to continue sewing with a regular metal saw, but it took forever. That is why for the first time in my life I decided not to follow safety precautions and for the sake of my viewers I decided to saw through this gas generator with a regular angle grinder in order to show it to you from the inside. And as you may have guessed, just several minutes later, several sparks coming out of the angle grinder found their way into the sodium azide in the capsule and it triggered activation of the airbag. The burst of scotched gas immediately burned my left hand, which was in a glove, but I don't know how much it helped me. Nevertheless, this intense heat almost burned down the glove, and there formed lots of deposits of sunken gases that burst out of the working capsule near the vice where the accident happened. What also helped to reduce the damage was the protective glasses I was wearing. If I hadn't, I could have become blind, but still, my left eye was slightly affected. Of course, after the accident, I immediately called the ambulance and went to the hospital with second-degree burns where my wounds were dressed. A couple of days later, my left eye healed and my hand is still healing. As you can see roughly, 90% of the burns have healed. In case my burned hand wasn't convinced you, let me repeat. Never try to put apart such airbags, the safety precautions were written with blood, as it were, including my own blood. I'm lucky not to have inhaled dust of the unburned sodium azide from that airbag, because its toxicity is comparable with that of sodium cyanide, which is a strong poison. After the accident, there spilled some semi-burned fuel chimps of sodium azide, which when lighted up, turned into real rockets. But I don't think that this footage was worth having my hand burned. Don't try this at home. Nevertheless, if you follow the safety precautions, then today, in case of a car accident, sodium azide can save your life. But still many car manufacturers are discontinuing the use of rather toxic sodium azide in airbags and substituting it with other pyrotechnic mixes. Well, now you know what happened to me and during this shooting of this video, the chemical that was supposed to save me harmed me as a result of my mishandling it. This is the reason why there are safety precautions and they should be followed. Safety precautions for the next chemical have been given, 
but some points were not clarified and in some countries the sale of this chemical was discontinued. I'm talking about the well-known potassium permanganate, which if mishandled can also do a lot of harm. From a chemical point of view, potassium permanganate is a very strong oxidizer, which means it can easily attract electrons of many chemicals. For instance, when this chemical is mixed with pharmacy glycerol, even at room temperature potassium permanganate immediately starts oxidizing carbon atoms in glycerol, increasing the temperature until the mixture self-ignites. This property of potassium permanganate is very useful in medicine, because besides alcohols and sugars, this chemical can oxidize the atoms that bacteria and other microorganisms are made of. That is why diluted potassium permanganate solution is still used in some countries for disinfecting skin and small wounds. Besides being used in medicine, potassium permanganate can also be used for some beautiful experiments. For instance, the well-known traffic light reaction. To run this reaction, I add some sugar solution with alkali to diluted potassium permanganate solution. The transition of colors here is really quite unusual. Besides this experiment, there is another interesting experiment with potassium permanganate. For this experiment, I need to mix it with sulfuric acid and the reaction produces a very strong oxidizer, which is a manganese oxide 7. If we take a regular candle, soak it in alcohol and touch it with this manganese oxide, the candle self-ignites. That's a rather interesting experiment, but you need to be highly cautious with manganese oxide 7. A small drop of alcohol spilled into a container with this substance can cause a fire. You had better not to try this at home. However, besides a peaceful use, some amateur chemists from the former Soviet Union countries found another use of potassium permanganate. They use it to synthesize some forbidden chemicals, for instance such as metcation. That is why in Russia the sale of potassium permanganate in its pure form was forbidden. It can only be purchased in the form of mixtures with other chemicals, such as silicon dioxide, which can be used to synthesize dodgy chemicals. Potassium permanganate is synthesized using a rather simple method. For this purpose, a mixture of manganese dioxide and potassium nitrate is used. This mixture is melted until it becomes smooth, and after that potassium hydroxide is added to the mixture. During this process, there forms a green manganese compound, which is potassium manganate. In order to turn it into a regular violet permanganate, solidified substance is dissolved in water, and a little bit of baking soda is added to the solution, which slightly changes the acidity of the solution, and turns manganate into permanganate. Thus, you can obtain a diluted potassium permanganate solution, which can be used for running a traffic light reaction for instance, but pure potassium permanganate cannot be synthesized this way. Well, lastly, I think I can tell you about one more interesting substance, which some of you even eat and have no idea how dangerous and at the same time how beneficial it can be. I'm talking about the cans with whipped cream that we have got so used to. Inside them there are nitrous oxide or it is also known laughing gas dissolved in the whipped cream, which serves as a propellant. When the button is pushed, pressure inside the nozzle suddenly drops, which immediately makes the nitrous oxide flowing out, forming the whipped cream. This process turns regular heavy cream into an airy delicacy. Besides cans with ready-made whipped cream, you can also buy special pastry dispensers. You just need to fill it with sweet heavy cream, attach a can with nitrous oxide, and after a couple manipulations, I got a whipped cream resembling factory made. Besides being used for culinary purposes, this gas is also often used by racers in their cars. It helps them to speed up their engines and have an advantage in the race. But what makes this gas dangerous? The thing is, just as in the car engine, when this gas is mixed with many flammable chemical, it significantly speeds up its burning. For instance, if we synthesize some nitrous oxide in a test tube, using decomposition of ammonium nitrate, the smoldering rush light easily ignites in such a medium. 
because nitrous oxide is a rather strong oxidizer, being only slightly weaker than pure oxygen. That is why when we blow nitrous oxide through a regular macaroni, we can get something like a hybrid jet engine. The burning of a regular silicon tube also significantly speed up in the flow of nitrous oxide, and the tube gloved like a welding spark. Besides being able to oxidize everything around, nitrous oxide also have a physiological impact on the organism. It can cause drowsiness or even euphoria. The unusual property of this gas to have a general anesthetic effect has been used since the mid-19th century by first anesthetists. Euphoria was something like a side effect, but some people got excessively enticed by this. And I think you have heard about laughing gas balloons at nightclubs. Those balloons were filled with this very gas, nitrous oxide. If I am not mistaken, they have also been forbidden in Russia. That's good, because this gas is highly dangerous for the brain. I strongly advise you not to do this. Nowadays, at hospitals, nitrous oxide is mixed with air and some other chemicals to induce general anesthesia and only for short periods of time. In the end, I'd also like to mention Squarespace, which will definitely take your capabilities to the highest level. Build your community with a fully integrated commenting system and blogging tools to share and schedule your posts. Connect with your audience and generate revenue with your fully enabled content as well as knowledgeable management of your subscribers and analysis of their data on the platform. And if you value comfort and convenience, then you'll definitely love Squarespace extension, which has everything from inventory to sending your products around the world. Follow the link in the description to take advantage of a free trial on the platform. And when you are ready, follow my link squarespace slash toysoy2 to save 10% when you buy your first website or domain. Good luck! So, I think after watching this video, you know about some dangerous chemicals and what happens if you mishandle them. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see many more new and interesting.